Okay, everyone, uh, like promised, I will set up chapter two, exercise one, and I'm gonna show you how to check for uh, the mass property. All right, so what we're gonna do first is always make sure to start a new part, file new, go to part, press okay. Okay, next, what I wanna do is look at the particular drawing that I'm gonna make, and just make sure that when you, um, you look at the part, you have to make sure that you have the right units. So for this part, I already know it's in inches because when I look at the dimension, say for the three quarter inch uh, length for 0.75, there's no zero in front of it. So I'm gonna do inches, pounds, second, okay? Then I'm gonna set up the units. And when I look at the drawing, there generally is just one unit behind the decimal point, okay? And because there's, uh, only one dimension with two numbers beyond the decimal point, that's that 0.75. Uh, I'm just gonna change that particular dimension and that's it. Next, what I'm gonna do is go to Options, Document Properties, go to Linear, make sure it's an ANSI, press OK. Uh, well, one more thing, make sure the diameter is also an ANSI, press OK. Front, new sketch, and I'm gonna go ahead and start from that right hand corner from the bottom of the part and just go ahead and start clicking away and just drawing the part and right now all i really care about is that it looks like the drawing i don't really care that it uh the dimensions are correct and a right click and select okay next i'm gonna put that little circle in there all right press okay sweet next what i'm gonna do is go ahead and dimension the whole thing so what I always like to do is start with the overall length. And just like magic, it kept all the um, features proportional to each other, right? So ah, this is a good example of what happens. Um, it looks like it didn't do it right. But it should have kept all the other features proportional to each other, but it didn't. Uh, and this is a good example of it not happening. So now I have to go ahead and fix it, all right? And I think this one goes out like this. All right, perfect. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and smart dimension uh, the other features. This is supposed to be 1.5. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do one more, uh, show you one more tool. I'm gonna hit the control key, hold it down, click on that line, click on that line and notice this pops up. I'm going to make them equal <laughs> and moved everything all over the place. Uh, press escape, control Z and undo that. Uh, I'm just going to skip it for now. It just, it's just not working the way I want it to. And that's fine. There's multiple ways to climb the mountain. So this is going to be 1.25. Notice it switches, it switches it to 1.3. I'm gonna go ahead and change the unit there, 1.25, okay? Next, what I'm gonna do is um, make these 0.75, switch that to two units. Okay, now that that's true, hold the control key again, click, click, make equal, and there it is, okay? Smart dimension, make this quarter inch, it's okay, and just make sure it's two units behind the decimal point. So notice how I'm nesting the dimension here, 1.25 and 0.25 in the middle there. Uh, just always wanna make sure that it's nice and neat like that. You wanna nest things like that. Um, put the big numbers on the outside, and then the smaller numbers on the inside. It's supposed to be 0.5, two units behind the decimal point, okay. So this particular part has, uh, some units with two numbers and some units with um, one number beyond that point. That's fine. Okay, next, smart dimension. This is one inch. This is 0.75. So I'm gonna click from that point to that line, 0.75. Ah, okay, so changing this value would result in invalid geometry, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that dimension for now. That doesn't sound right. Uh, and I wonder what's blocking me from doing that. Oh, 
I don't know if you see this. If you look closely, there is a perpendicular constraint on there. So what's happening is that they're saying this line and that line, they're perpendicular to each other. What I'm going to do is right, left click the, the constraint, right click it, and delete it. All right. So now I should move. So now what's going to happen, I'm going to smart dimension again. Click on that point, click on that line, pull it up, and 0.75, enter and make it two units beyond the decimal point, press OK. And notice it's slowly being defined, OK? One inch, one, one. All right, so what's the holdup? Why is this still blue? Can anyone tell me? Well. If it's still blue, that means it's undefined, correct? So what I can do, what I like to do when it when it's undefined like that, whoop, control Z. Control Z is undo, by the way, and you can also undo through here. Um, so what's happening here is that it's it's undefined, right? So you notice what's happening. Uh, the drawing doesn't illustrate it, but we're gonna assume that this is directly in line with this. If it's not, the drawing should specify specifically. All right, so I'm going to show you another um, type of um, constraint that I can add. Hold the control key, click that line, click this line. And you got to be careful. You don't click on the midpoint. All right, click on the line. Notice that when I hover over it, there's a little yellow dot. That's the midpoint. You, you don't want that. You just want the line. So here, the properties show up. And what I'm going to do is make it collinear. So those two lines now are going to be in line with each other. Press OK. So now the part is fully defined. All right. I'm going to exit the sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude this. All right. Notice that it selected the whole thing. All right. So what I need to do is click on Select Contours, remove it, and then just select it again. And according to the document, it says it's 0.5 inches. Press OK. All right, so now that it's done, this is the incline support. Um, exercise number one for chapter two. I'm gonna go ahead and put an isometric, file, save as, chapter two, underscore X1. That's the naming protocol that I like to use, chapter two, exercise one, and so on. Keeps it easy. As you notice here, I have a, other, other parts that I've already built a little while ago. So I'm going to have chapter two, exercise one, save. Uh, let me do X1, sorry. There you go, that's easier. Uh, save that, okay? Next, what I want to do is go ahead and evaluate the part. If you go to mass properties, the part itself should now be 0 0.08 pounds, all right? 0 0.08 pounds. So that's how you check your part. I'll save again, just to double check. And here you go. Part one is done. Again, if anyone needs any help with chapter two, any of the particular parts, I can definitely help you. Uh, just let me know. Some of the drawings are not all complete. If you see circles, um, we'll assume that they are holes. Uh, the, the drawings themselves are ambiguous for that reason. So um, in other words, if you look at this particular part, when you look at it in this direction, technically, this could be an extrusion, meaning it could be a small boss or a round that's popping up. Uh, the drawing is not very particular clear on that. It can either be a an extrusion popping up or it could be a hole. I'm assuming it's a hole, um, but there should be another view on the right side of the part that directly shows that it is a hole. In other words, you should be able to see the hidden lines of the hole on the right side. All right. Okay, again, so if anyone has any questions, please ask in the discussion forum. I will, I will um, certainly post this on our website as soon as it gets processed. Have a nice day.